The first myth we learn in medical training is that urine should be sterile. All bacteria in the urine are a problem and must be eradicated. What if I were to tell you that's not exactly true, though? The prevalence of asymptomatic or incidental bacteria varies with age and sex. This becomes a normal finding with aging and is generally inconsequential. The urinary tract uses the flow of urine to remove bacteria. In situations where the flow of urine is compromised, like if you have an enlarged prostate or you've had a few babies and you've got some pelvic organ prolapse, bacteria can overgrow in the urine and will be detected intermittently on cultures. Prior to the 1950s, we used to think that bladders were always pristine and that bacteria always meant infection, always meant symptoms, but in 1956, Cass reported that that's not always the case. This unique pathophysiology of asymptomatic bacteria was initially thought to be an area of concern when Friedman found chronic pyelonephritis on patients who died with renal failure. The suspicion was that these smoldering infections that were undiagnosed led to kidney failure and patient mortality. This was eventually proven incorrect, but it set a temporary standard that bacteria was always bad because of long-term silent consequences, and these misassociations have been perpetuated through medical school training. To test the consequences of asymptomatic bacteria, a large Swedish study with 24 years of follow-up uh, monitored women and found a lot of asymptomatic bacteria. Antibiotic treatment in these women did not reduce repeat episodes of bacteria, and in longitudinal follow-up, there was no difference in women with and without bacteria in relation to the risks of hypertension, mortality, and kidney failure, as previously suggested by Friedman. This shifted the paradigm and suggested that maybe all bacteria isn't harmful. To add further complexity, several studies have suggested that having bacteria in your urine may even be helpful for avoidance of future infections. On the left here, Asher found that eradication of bacteria leads to an increase in reinfection and relapse. On the right, Hansen found that shifts in bladder colonizing bacteria open the door for the development of symptomatic UTI. This suggests that there are good bacteria that are protective against symptoms and bad bacteria that create symptoms and that antibiotics can actually hurt the good to help the bad. In a randomized controlled trial, antibiotics versus no antibiotics for asymptomatic bacteria, those in the antibiotic group had an increase in development of symptomatic disease for at least one year after their attempted eradication of their asymptomatic bacteria. We are harming patients by treating asymptomatic bacteria. Treating someone's urine who isn't having symptoms may actually paradoxically increase their chance of having symptoms over the next year of their life. And I'll draw attention to the fact that there was an increase in antibiotic resistance in those getting antibiotics, which, which makes sense. And also there was no difference in the pyelonephritis rates uh, between the two groups. This really complex situation may be due to the concept of bacterial interference, where low virulence or good bacteria protect the bladder against higher virulence, bad bacteria. Organisms like lactobacillus and even E. coli may outcompete invaders, prevent sticky biofilm formation, and force these bad bacteria to behave. This sounds an awful lot like what we know about microbiomes and other organ systems like the intestines and the lung. A fine patina of flora is a defense mechanism our body uses as a shield, using nature against nature. I would note that many of these good bacteria on this slide are impossible to distinguish from their bad counterparts. You can't look at a culture and say, okay, obviously I got a bad guy here and I got to kill it. How do you know? Consequences of killing the good guys has been implicated in development of symptomatic disease and even cancer, incontinence, and kidney transplant failure. So I was taught that urine is always sterile, uh, but the lie detector determined that that was a lie. The bladder is naturally colonized with bacteria that may actually be a protective mechanism. 
positive urine cultures do not mean the patient has an infection any more than a positive rectal culture means that the patient has colitis. And I would not treat with antibiotics unless you have an endpoint that you are trying to achieve. This is the first in a series of lectures that you can find at our Vi Viper YouTube channel. Take a listen to our other nine myths about urinary tract infection that get mistaught in medical school. And let me know if you have questions.